Hello everyone, so today let's have a look to the singleton pattern. So that pattern guarantees that uh, only one instance of a class is used uh, during the execution of a program. So it's very useful when you have multiple consumers uh, which want to access to a shared resource like a database or like an ID service. So it's very much an OOP object-oriented uh, pattern, but we can illustrate how it works in Go and um, how it can be useful and how we can implement it. So at the end of the video, we will discuss pros and cons and um, I also want to discuss with you why you should avoid implementing that design pattern if you can. But uh, that's my personal opinion there. I don't use that pattern much, but um, it's very useful to know it. All right, so let's start. So we have our main program there. So let's just create another package. Uh, we're just going to call it service. And in that package, um, we will create an ID service. So basically, I want a service which can provide a unique uh, ID. So we're going to call it ID service and it's going to hold a counter, which is going to be an int. So we can provide a constructor for that service. So I'm just going to call it new ID service. And it can return you a pointer ID service. I'm just going to be um, a pointer of an ID service. And we're going to make the counter equal to zero to start with. And then, so note that the constructor is obviously public because we're going to invoke it in the main program. And then we're going to create a receiver method on that ID service and we're gonna call it, usually we call this kind of uh, method next because it's just gonna iterate the counter like s.counter plus plus so to iterate it and then return it. So the function next will return an int. All right, so it's fairly simple. So then we're gonna try to invoke that in our main program. So is going to put that on the right and then the main program on the left. So you have your service, new ID service, our public method. So we can assign that to a variable. We can just call it S1. And then let's make a usage of it. So um, let's say our program is building cars and motorbike. And as a manufacturer, you just want to give a unique ID to the products you are manufacturing. So let's create a simple function build car. And just for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna log car and the ID that our service will give us. So just invoke that function build car and then s1.next, which was our function. Right. So then it's returning car colon one. So that works as intended. So then let's invoke the function again. So it's just incrementing the counter. So then you can see car two. Right, so now let's introduce the problem. So we are also manufacturing motorbike. So we're just gonna create a very similar function as previously. So again, for, for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna log uh, motorbike colon uh, and then the ID. All right, so then let's say instead of invoking S1, it's somewhere else in, in your program. Like we're not dealing with a simple five lines program, but it's a very dense program. And there was some mistake or bad dependency injection. And then we just invoked um, service.new ID service, unfortunately, a second time, which we're going to call S2. And then we're going to invoke uh, our motorbike function. And you can see that it has returned motorbike colon one, which is a problem because um, the unique ID one was already assigned to car one. So that's a problem. So basically we, by construction, we let the users and the consumers 
uh, to reinstantiate that service so it's um, that's a problem so that's that's what the singleton pattern can cater for so um, let's implement it so what we can do straight away is to um, protect that constructor function by just make it um, private right so you can see that the main program cannot instantiate that service anymore so we are protected all right so we're just gonna um, create a singleton service which will wrap up the the ID service all right so let's put some command to organize our code a bit so below you have the ID service and then we're gonna create the singleton service so we can just call it ID service singleton and it's gonna encapsulate for you the ID service so it's retaining a pointer of an ID service like that and then to implement a proper singleton service a uh, singleton pattern sorry you just provide um, static methods so in our case in go is just gonna be um, receiver method on the singleton and you simply gonna get an ID service from that singleton so just gonna throw back to you a pointer ID service right so the implementation is fairly simple and straightforward so we're gonna say that if our singleton doesn't hold an ID service like that equal nil so then just instantiate a new one and you can see that because it is in the same package we have we can invoke that private function that we um, changed a few minutes ago and then if not it means that it has been instantiated so we can just return that id service it's as simple as that right so then we need to make some modification then in our main program so we're gonna declare a global variable so that's following the, the recipe the pattern so we have our singleton available in the whole program and then here we we can't uh, instantiate services anymore so we're just gonna invoke the singleton and ask for a service so you can see i can do s1 singleton get service and s2 singleton get service so now let's try and you can see car one car two motorbike free even though we on line 16 it looks like we instantiate something else but we just got through the interface and asked for an id and the counter has been preserved so here i'm just putting a log line to show you when it's going to be instantiated for the first time so then we can um just put a log line so if it reaches a uh, null condition it's just gonna sell to us that there was no service and we can rerun that again and you can see it's happening uh, just um, before the first car there you go right so let me show you something else so if for instance we invoke again the motorbike with s2 and then we invoke the motorbike again with s1 Right, so you can see motorbike 3, motorbike 4, motorbike 5. So S1 and S2 are in fact pointing to the same service behind the hood. So then you're, no matter how many times you're going to invoke singleton get service, you would always get the same instance across your uh, program lifetime. So that's what the pattern aims for. All right, um, so now I just want to discuss uh, pros and cons with you about this pattern because uh, it's a very classic pattern like school case or like interview pattern, singleton, singleton. So you have to know how to implement it because it's quite useful in other language or on the principle, right? But in Golan, we would not very much implement that, especially for my example we would not do all that implementation we would prefer to use like an atomic counter or maybe using a mutex and so on right so let's start with the good thing first so 
um, so as it states it you have a unique instance at any moment of your program execution so that's quite comfortable because you know that uh, all your consumers if they need that ID service they can be sure that it's gonna be a unique counter with that pattern so that um, it does what it said it does so that's really good so it's really good for shared resources that as I was saying at the beginning of the video so shared resource can be an ID service can be a database or it can be telemetry so that's uh, quite useful all right and then the second one is the smart construction so it's just you can see that the complexity of the construction is uh, shielded behind the singleton so it's um, it makes the consumers point of view really easy they know that they will get a service but they don't really care about how it's instantiated constructed and how it's handled to be unique so it's quite smart in a way right so now um, the bad things right so obviously you saw at the beginning of um, my implementation that I used a global variable so that's not great because um, obviously you wouldn't like to have dangling global variables spread in your code base right because it's quite difficult difficult to understand difficult to maintain it's not beginners friendly so you tend to avoid to have those kind of things right um second one it can be this pattern can be misunderstood misinterpreted and you can um you, c you can make mistakes in that implementation basically so then you can introduce some false concurrency some race conditions um, maybe the counter you can alter it if you don't um, configure it properly so it's, it's quite difficult to get it right it's simple but if in my my example is simple but if you have something more complicated to implement it might be tricky all right and lastly which i think is the most damageable one it's not easy to test because you from the point of view of the consumer you're using the singleton but how do you test your singleton because the construction is hidden so you don't have control of what you inject into the singleton so if it's a database how do you mock your database or how do you have for testing for test coverage of your services um, I think what you would have to do is to just have like a Russian dolls basically so your singleton would invoke your proper service but your proper service would invoke another proper service that would be isolated and testable so it's quite difficult to maintain quite difficult to um, it's just a, a huge connective load basically just to test it properly and make it maintainable so it would definitely not be beginner friendly all right let's finish that video by um, talking about how you could avoid implementing that singleton pattern so at the beginning of my example you saw the confusion between instantiating s1 and then s2 so what you could do is to have a better dependency injection system like it would not be imp possible in your program to have two instances of that id service running at the same time that would be a first idea second idea is like quite common sense but you could have a smaller and simpler code so then you do know where your service is instantiated so you have a better control of what you're doing so um, you could have for instance a smaller db schema meaning that you had multiple dbs or so it's smaller to manage and easier to track those kind of bad design or you could simply have some microservices architecture where your one microservice is so tiny that you you are fully aware and you're fully owning your your code and it's easier to manage basically uh, third point is uh, always always have a really great testing quality as your priority so if you do for all unit testing integration testing end-to-end -end testing smoke testing this kind of problem and you would see straight away that there's a problem with your motorbike factory and your car factory basically 
so you you would detect that your design is is not good which leads me to the third point so yeah a better software designer head so when we talk about software design it's not only like drawing big uh, squares on a whiteboard but also drawing which classes are gonna talk to which other classes what's a consumer in your program what's a client and so on and making that design effort you would understand which kind of patterns you need or which kind of uh, restriction you need on your software number four uh, i already said it like on the previous slide but yeah just as avoid using global variable because having a dangling global variable you don't know the state of it and then you have to cater for it with like a singleton pattern so better not having them at all and having um more like a functional style of programming that would help you as well and then to finish uh, my sixth one is just to do this kind of uh, atomic um operation with the ids we have some tool we have some tools in Golang like Atomic and Mutexes, so you could use that. So maybe I will do a video on those uh, later. Right. So I hope you enjoyed um, that pattern, and I hope you enjoyed the um, discussions uh, about it. I uh, thought it was important. So if you like the video, just like and subscribe, so then I understand your interest for it. And happy coding. Bye.